Are you bored of lame video converter tool reviews? Let's not turn it on, let's take it apart. Come on. Uh, that sounded good. Doing hopefully a quick follow up video from the chroma key one. Um, in that video, I was complaining about the lack of linear output from my digital system producing this uh, color chart. The reason why I had that problem is I was just using the HDMI output of my laptop rather than a dedicated um, sort of color aware uh, output device like one of these Blackmagic uh, intensity shuttles. Um, I have two of these. And so the question is why wasn't I using this for the last video? Well, this one that's plugged in over here, the reason why I wasn't using it is because I fried it. Um, I uh, had an accident a couple of years ago where somehow, let's not get into the details, uh, 110 volts made its way into here. And while it's able to output HDMI, as you can see here fine, the analog outputs uh, aren't working. And so it's an expensive device and I bit the bullet and I bought a second one. But the second one I bought has USB super speed, uh, weird connector on it um, that I can't get to work with any of my Macs. Um, so I think it works fine, but it just, I can't get it to be recognized by my Mac because whatever. Um, so I'm embarrassed and I thought, you know what? I should get someone who knows something about electronics to try and fix this guy. And I know something about electronics. Maybe I can fix this. So. I pulled my oscilloscope over here and I noticed something interesting. I think I might be able to fix it. Let's go have a look. If we look at the PR out, we get the right signal at the right voltage level coming out of PR. And PB works too. Oh. Why? Why you no work? Why? Let's have a look. It looks like there's something there. Zoom in, in, enhance. Get the triggering right. Zoom in a bit in this direction. That looks like a luminance signal. We have what should be a sync pulse there. Um, it, it's the right shape. It's got a lot of ringing and noise and artifacts. And the big problem with it is it's plus or minus 50 millivolts rather than, you know, a few hundred millivolts. Um, but the signal's there. Let's take this guy apart and see if we can work out what the problem is. It's a quick reminder if you're not familiar with this device, it is a video input output device. It is not a video card, which means that it talks via uh, lightning over here uh, or USB. And that allows the computer to directly send pixel information either in or out of this device without going through the video card drivers or any of the graphics subsystems, of the operating system, which means you get sort of bit level perfect representation of your data, which is important if you wanna have um, complete control of the signal chain. So it has a bunch of inputs on this side, HDMI, uh, component, composite, audio, um, and S-Video here, and the same outputs on the other side. And as I said, it communicates via USB or, or Thunderbolt. Um, down here, we have all of the devices to communicate over Thunderbolt. Here we have a Spartan 6 FPGA. I'll get to what that does in a second. The interesting chips are over here. Over here we have an analog devices AD, let me look at my microscope for a second, uh, AD7604. Uh, this is an HDMI receiver. So uh, HDMI comes in here. I might do another video about what HDMI actually is, but HDMI digital information comes in here. It um, communicates with the physical protocol, extracts the bits per pixel, um, it can do some color conversion to deal with the different color spaces of HDMI and just outputs that as parallel data. It also has three uh, analog to digital converters, 12-bit um, operating up to 170 megahertz. So this entire section can deal with uh, 1080p 60, um, potentially could deal with uh, 4K up to 24 frames a second as well, um, but at a slightly lower bit depth. 
Um, but anyway, it communicates with these guys here and converts it into data that can be understood by the FPGA. The FPGA then per pixel, uh, I'm assuming per pixel, um, will retranscode that in a way that can talk to Thunderbolt and get sent to the computer. Um, over here we have an analog devices 9889B. Um, this is an HDMI transmitter. So again, it gets parallel data in pixels in, in, in digital format. We'll transcode that or um, encode that in a way that uh, works with HDMI. It also allow, does the color space conversion and things like that. Um, it also will take that data and send it out in a way that can be understood by this little chip here, um, which is an analog devices 7393. Uh, this is a three channel 12-bit, uh, 170 megahertz uh, digital to analog converter. So the pixel information comes from the Spartan, goes to this guy, gets sent to this guy, then out via com component here. Now the problem that I've been having is that my Y channel of component is not working. Um, it's, it's sort of sending signal out, but the voltage level is too low, there's a lot of noise, it just looks like there's a problem in signal integrity. But it makes me think that the FPGA is working, this guy's working because HDMI works fine, these other channels work fine. So my first thought was maybe this um, digital to analog converter somehow got fried, but um, I thought I'd start even closer up to the front end. Um, I might snap you to a, a microscope view here. In between each of these RC Ajax is a little, that guy there, a small resistor. And my first thought, given that it sort of has a trace going directly from that resistor to this guy here, is that's probably a 75 ohm impedance matching uh, resistor put in series after the output section of this digital to analog converter. If I check these guys over here, this one and this one over here, they read 75 ohms just fine. This one here, however, reads two ohms. It's basically a dead short. Um, I looked at the data sheet for this because it didn't seem to make sense that if I followed these traces, the output of that resistor, assuming that goes via via back to this guy, is short or is connected to ground, the shield, Usually it'd be connected to the center pin. Turns out this has a two different sort of drive modes and in the drive mode that this guy's using, it wants a 75 ohm resistor between the center pin and ground. And so if this guy's shorting, that probably explains why we're getting a bad signal. So my first and very best guess is high voltage came in here, fried this resistor, everything else is fine. So I think we have a half a penny component uh, that needs to be replaced. Luckily, 75 ohm uh, resistors are very commonly used in analog video, so I've got a lot of high quality 75 ohm resistors. I need to pop this guy off the board and replace it, and I think we'll be fine. So let's do that. Well, that is a bit of a bummer. I replaced the uh, 75 ohm resistor. Um, I have plenty of those in stock, and it's still reading as a dead short across there, which makes me think the analog to, sorry, the digital to analog converter was fried. That's the ADV7393. Um, not a super expensive part. I looked on the internet, it's about $17 in quantity of one. Um, but I want one now and I don't have one now, but I do. There is another one down here, another uh, of those digital to analog converters. I'm guessing it's, uh, supplying the outputs for the audio channels and the composite uh, video out. Um, I guess the reason why they're using 170 megahertz uh, 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 digital to analog converter for audio is uh, they need you know 10 megahertz or so for the composite, um, but they're already using the chip over here. So in terms of reduction of the bomb cost, having the same chip twice is better. So is there another one? No, that's just something similar. Um, but I think I can just take this guy off here and put it up there. The, the challenge is it has a large ground pad underneath it, so it might be difficult to get the heat in it with my setup here without having a um, heat pad um, or a hot plate. But hey, um, why not? 
<laughs> let's see if I can remove that guy and put it over there. And it all means that these outputs won't work. I won't be able to get audio out of this um, or composite video, but I care about that a lot less than I care about the component. So yeah, try it. And then if that works, I can order another one and put that on at some point. It'll be testing my micro soldering and rework capabilities. It's not something I usually do, but if it's already broke, um, it's not like I'm going to break it more. Anyway. So after about half an hour of dickering around with the hot air gun, we are exactly back where we started. Uh, I wasn't able to, to get the chip to come off. Um, it might have some conformal coding on it. It might be that I just don't know what I'm doing. Probably the latter. Um, but I haven't ruined it any more than it was already broken, which in some ways is a win for me. Um, I might speak to some people who are better at uh, hot air rework things and work out how to get that chip off because I'm pretty sure that chip's what the problem is. Um, it's working exactly the same way that it was with the noisy low voltage uh, Y output, PB and PR are behaving the same way that they were. Um, I started to melt some of the plastic, um, just a little bit uh, on the edges. Anyway, um, so I decided to stop and uh, just leave, leave, uh, leave it where it was. It would be nice to answer this video with, yes, I can repair this hundred dollar, multi hundred dollar device with a half a penny of a resistor that did not fix it. Um, I didn't fix it, but I didn't break it anymore. I figured showing the wins is just as good as showing the losses. So here's a, a, a neutral result for me today. I learned a lot more about how this thing works and hopefully it was an interesting video for you. Anyway, see you on the flip side. Bye.